Welcome to part 34 of the restoration and installation of the 1865 Horse and Andrews organ here in my private chapel. So we overhauled the pedal board, we put all this back together and we kicked the camcorder tripod and we came to the conclusion that the way the pneumatic touch box was would f wouldn't fail safe. Now, let me under get you to understand this. This organ is 1865 and it originally had a 25 note pedal board and was mechanical action to the pedals. That's obvious to me because there's signs that that's how it was. In 1919 stroke 1920, this organ was um, had some work done. It'll be some uh, overhaul work and it was moved to the building we bought it from. We bought it in 2010. So it had been there, uh, well, 90 years. At that point, they changed the pedal board from 25 note to 30. In the UK, 30 notes is the standard pedal board and that was made the standard in 1914 at an international European conference. However, American pedal boards that are 32 note. So, this had a 25 note pedal board. So when it moved, I think this organ went back to the factory and it had this, 20, this 30 note pedal board made instead. Now it could be the same framework, but with more pedals, this kind of thing which would happen. It is radiating and concave. And they decided to put the action onto pneumatic. So instead of it being mechanical, it went onto pneumatic. That enabled them to easily add the extra chests, the extra chest with the extra five notes on. So pretty normal for UK organs to have pneumatic pedals and tracker keys. So I would say that 90 plus percent of organs in the UK are tracker action keys and pneumatic pedals. Our finished conica in the, in the workshop is all tracker and that includes the pedals and that's the way it wants to stay. Now, the way this touch box works, as I showed before, these, which are gonna be getting, gonna get removed again, these extensions onto the pedal, they hold down a valve. When you press the pedal, it actually releases the pressure. Uh, hold down a valve, which is upside down. So imagine it's like that. And so it's pressed in. And when you press the pedal, it clicks out. Imagine that, like the pen clicking there. So it's done silently. So the trouble is, this is under the bellows. You can't get to this. You've got the mechanical action in the way here. So you can't get behind here without taking mechanical action out. These wooden pieces go onto the wires that operate the valves. And so the way it's working, it's a matter of the pedals returning, which shuts off the, the pneumatic action, which means if anything goes wrong with the pneumatic action or anything goes out of alignment, the note sticks. Well, that's the last thing you want to do because you want it to fail safe. You want it to not work, not to play a note if something goes wrong, not to play all the time. That's ridiculous. Yes, you could shut the stop off because the wind supply would then be shut off to that department. But at least if you have it fail safe, you can play all the rest of the notes. So, it's such a Mickey Mouse arrangement that I've decided on the end of the last video we're going to do it on electric action. So we're going to take all these off, they'll go in a box which will go under the bellows, the touch box from the pneumatic action will go under the bellows and perhaps in a hundred years time somebody might want to, to put it on pneumatic action, perhaps somebody might want to put it on tracker action, but that's their choice. It's pretty normal that pneumatic pedals end up going on electric action. Now this rail, this is a hefty piece of timber which I've mounted these reed switches on. This is a free floating bus bar. They're not mechanically 
The connections are not mechanical, they're solely solder. And in electronics, that would be a no-no. But we don't want to wrap it around because it's got to be easy to get to if anything does break. The reason it's floating is because timber's going to expand and contract. We once made a mistake of, of having a bus bar that wasn't floating and it was anchored at about four points and the reed switches broke uh, in winter. So, learnt my lesson and it's floating. So we've got a pin here, we've got a bus bar there which will be connected to positive, it'll switch positive. The special magnets are on order. They we call them magnets, they are electromagnets. It's just organ builder silly speak. And what's gonna happen, this mount sideways on now. I, I made this, I've, I've just repurposed this. We've got another organ in the workshop which um, I stopped doing anything to 10 years ago because we had to do other things. And we're going to recommence with it. And I had this on the manual. Uh, it's, a, it's Again, it's a tracker action organ. I had this on the keys and I was going to put, we are going to put a, some electric um, action on the keys in addition to the existing mechanical action. We've got an extra stop going on. We've got, we've got a 15th going on. We've got some other things going on. So... I decided this wasn't a satisfactory method. And so we're gonna put, we're gonna take the keys out, we're gonna overhaul the, um, I'm gonna say the ivories, but they're, um, they're a dreadful 1930s plastic. I'm gonna do those. When I initially did it, it looked all right. But two weeks later, the keys looked dreadful. So I don't mind if they're ivory and this colored, we're not going to be ever replacing ivory, um, except it's going to get plastic, isn't it? So, I've taken off the 58 reed switches, changed the spacing, repurposed it, and it's going to go in like that. So I've cut that. We'll have a suitable gap, which is probably about where we are. And the fixed magnets will be on a slotted piece of timber like this. I'm going to mount, this is what we tend to do, mount a magnet in a, in a wooden holder. And <laughs> it's sticking to that screw. And then when we press the key, in fact, I can actually hear the reed switch. Well, that was a good positioning guess. And it's got good latitude and it's reliable. It's hermetically sealed and all that. It only has to drive about a tenth of an amp. So no switching transistors or anything like that. So it's very straightforward and that's what we're doing. So today I want to remove all these things which I spent so much time putting on and put those in the box and I'm going to make up the cable forms outside. There needs to be three cable forms. Uh, the left hand chest is 12 notes, I think. The right hand chest is 13 notes. And the supplementary chest is five notes. So we're going to make up the cable forms for that. And I'm going to solder the cable forms on. Then we can put this into position, get the magnets in, get it aligned and shove it in the organ because I'm really wanting to play the pedals on this. The first thing we've now got to do to make up the cable harness is we've got to make what we call a scale. So here's a piece of timber and I've gone over with the marker pen and I've made a mark where all of the 30 notes are. Starting at C, I've made a mark where the C is there, made a mark where the C is there and the F there. So, we're going to cut slots in this and then we're going to make scales for the base, the treble chest and the supplementary five note additional chest they put on in 1920. The scale I need to make is for the base chest. So I've got a piece of similar timber which has been kicking around outside. So if I get down on my knees, ooh it's a long way down there at my age. Um, and we'll do the same again.
There's 13 on this side, so there must be 12 on the other. It's a tube out of the bottom. So the, the box I'm going to make will sit underneath and then be tubed in. You'll see. Now these notes aren't chromatic. So we'll make a note. Now then, I'm already stuck. I've got two A sharps. So we're already confused. Well, I think this one is going to be the deeper note because it's got a smaller motor. So we'll put it as GG and that one as AA. So that looks like it's the bottom octave. C, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, and then the next octave, C, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp. Good. I'll have to take the face board off the other side. To do that. Where's the lid gone to a magic marker? Hmm. Right, so then we're going to cut this the same way and you'll see what we're doing outside. On the C-sharp side, the right-hand side, we're going to do the same again. And we'll write down what they are. So, G, F, F, D, D sharp, C, C sharp, A, that'll be A, A, and that'll be G, G. And that'll be the first B. And then C sharp. B. A. G. D sharp. And F. Good. We get that cut and laid out as well. This is a C sharp side. The supplementary chest, I'll be doing that uh, off the camera. I think it's recording. I've just been talking to myself. Uh, it's so bright, I can't see the viewfinder. So we'll just run in C and D. I've already done the white wire, which is the C sharp side. Run that one in. So I'm choosing to use different colors. We didn't do that when I did training. You're supposed to know where they all are anyway. But it does help. When we do run them all in the same colour, I tend to do the C in a different colour. And sometimes I tend to do the G in a different colour, just to help see where I am. I'll just run through a few of these through. So it's just going to be done like 
in a small scale as to how automotive wiring is done. There'll be pegboards, lots of reels of wire, and somebody actually having to run them in just like this by hand. But I've only got 12 notes on one chest and 13 on the other. Uh, where am I? C, D, E. G-Sharp A sharp. So I'll just show you what's happening at this end, if I can actually see the viewfinder. So we're running a cable through a screw with some sleeving on it, across there to the next bench, which is here, if that's in the viewfinder. So we've got a screw there, it's going on the scale which we've made there, and it gets into the groove. When we've done the third one for the five notes on the supplementary chest, we're going to start tying it in with waxed thread so probably join me then I'm busy making this cable up and lacing it I couldn't find the proper lacing uh, stuff which is waxed but I've used the red thread which is, to be honest is what we always used it when I did my apprenticeship so um, it's all tied in, in in the red thread and you even tie the last one in because if you only tie it into there not the final one you think which if if these lose their kind of position, uh, you could think which is that wire going to go to if you've got two coming out of one hole. So I've done that on the other side too. And then we've got the third one up here. just like that for this small five note chest considerable number of days or even a week or two later we've got all the magnets in there's three types of uh, wooden carrier that i've made and you'll notice that they're screwed on with a single screw tight against the back of the pedal into the end grain each carrying a 10 millimeter permanent magnet and of course the idea is that when we press the pedal then that goes in proximity of the reed switch so the bus bar which is going to be a positive 12 to 15 volts is floating because I once did one of these and by the time you put it in a church and the temperature changes you end up with the reed switches cracking so unless you mount them on a printed circuit board made of fiberglass which is the alternative method uh, then it really needs to have some freedom of movement. So there we go. So it gives me some adjustment. Because by the time this is installed, to reach through, we'd actually have to take some of the um, pull downs out for the coupler mechanism to get to them, even to adjust them. And this is why we needed it to be like this. So it's not likely to fail on, more likely to fail off. So I'll just bring this over, this box over. We've had the magnets arrive. We call them magnets in the, in the organ trade. These are what are called chest magnets. 
and these mount on the outside of the chest you'll see that as things progress inside here in this side in this cap is an armature the armature is attracted to the electromagnet which is there and it basically is an air valve which pushes air into a pneumatic system when not in use and exhausts it when the notes wanted to be played which is exactly what we need to do to those chests so we're going to get this installed this evening and this will give the my room to start making the mechanism with the magnets uh, to electrify the primary we're going to get a pedal board in and we'll be able to start putting the pedal couplers in as well something else i've been doing whilst waiting for things to happen like magnets to arrive i've been painting some of the panels so against the bookcase there there are four finished panels out of the 10 this organ has uh, the one on the crate has had a single color coat and then there's uh, one in the organ workshop still back next door which has had the undercoat done the other three aren't out of storage yet so we'll leave it at that right so it's saturday and uh, we managed to get the pedal board installed yesterday it isn't screwed down its exact position is determined by the mechanical action, the couplers that, if we just wind the camera down, you will see the roller board um, above the swell pedal there in the middle with the new stickers, they're not trackers, they're stickers on when they're doing what these are doing. So we now have to fit a set of 30 stickers between that roller board and the back of the pedal board because once they're in you can't get to whatever's behind that and that's why we need to not be using that touch box and why we've put it on an electric primary action. So it's, it's going to be just the same but with that primary action being electric that could be reversed at any time. Remember this was a 1920 alteration, it isn't original. I would have far rather had this being the original 25 note pedal board and being the tracker action it was supposed to be. But the difficulty then is the organ is then difficult to play and some pieces can't be played because there aren't enough pedals. So it, it's one of those compromises. It shouldn't have the, the center swell pedal. You know, there's one or two things which you've got to draw the line to. And that's why I didn't mind altering the primary action to, to electric from pneumatic. So we're going to start now by getting out the packet of stickers. Now packets of stickers sound like things that schoolboys swap at school. So here's the, that says four on it, I think that's an odd one. And it says, pedal stickers. So we took this organ out in 2010. Let's hope they don't all want remaking. There's bound to be some. I'd, I would really like to get the bottom 13 of this in today. And then when I play three hymns on this organ, four hymns on this organ tomorrow after church, which I've now been doing on the hymns channel every week since the organ's become playable over the last five weeks, say, um, it would be really nice to be able to play the pedals, even if it's just the bottom octave and even if it's only to the coupler. Now that coupler needs a lining, so it's not just a matter of fitting these. I've actually got to take one or two bits out to get to the the action and align it. Now laid out from bass to treble, we know that's number one, we know that's number 30 and hopefully the numbers in between correspond. Now we've got one missing, we've got a broken one and we've got another broken one. And I always suspected there was one that went all the way through from the pedal board to the back four beam um, 
bypassing the roller board. They usually manage to get one full length in and not have all that mechanism. So that will be that one. So we need to remake that. And then we need to remake that. And then we've got to kind of work out the length. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. We haven't got 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, they're a bit ambiguous. It depends what fits when we come to it. 25, 26, 27, 22, and 30. So it's definitely 16 that's missing. So we have to make one which is something between that one and that one and what we're going to do is we'll turn this one into the missing one by cutting it down because we're making a new one then we've only got to make two new ones ah this is broken as well that's got to be done so whichever is yeah so it's, it's i think there's four to do well, that'll take some doing. We're heading, oops, we're kicking in the clamp corner. So what we're up to here is we're making this uh, primary electric action chest. So we have the mahogany and I've got two thinner pieces and two fatter pieces, which I've spent some time working on. So, if I just get the magnet, for example, so this hole drilled corresponds to the hole there. Now if we were doing a keyboard, 60 something, I'd set some jigs up, but I've, all these have been done by hand. I've used the pillar drill, which is to my right, uh, to, to do the um, holes, but they've all been filed out by hand. I would use a mortising machine if I've got a lot to do. But I've got this chest with 13 on, the other chest with 12. So setting that up would probably take longer. So that goes through the hole provided there, and we'll screw on into position, all 13 of them. You'll see on the other side, the air actually travels up the centre of the magnet. But there is some space either side as well, but that's, that's where the, the air actually goes up. So when it activates, it opens up this hole to the chest internal air pressure. So we've got the hole drilled there. It's then bored through here. This is going to then be... Um, sealed off because it's just the the working and then it's been re-drilled there so the air goes from there and comes out there remember that's plugged so that's how you're transferring it to the side so this piece of timber will be glued and screwed like that And so now the air travels all the way through to here. And then the pneumatic tubing will go from here to where it would have gone on the 1920 pneumatic chest. It's as simple as that. So we'll have a short run of tubing, probably about six inches. And uh, I started tubing up the, the top notes when it was intended to stay pneumatic. So we'll simply use what I'd already chopped off the reel and we'll be using this tubing which will go into the hole beautifully and we glue that in. So you'll see if you look carefully, this is counterboard. I didn't need to put a, a 10 millimeter hole all the way through because a lot of this is the, uh, the body of the tube, the wall of the tube. So simply counterboard it like that 
And of course that is done on the drill press, otherwise you wouldn't get them all equal. And we started off at this side and um, using a automatic center pop. Uh, so so we've, we've got the drill started and using a woodworking bit, which has got a point on it. Perhaps I'll show you on the next chest. So, but what I'm going to concentrate on is getting this one working. So I want this video to end when we have something working electrically on that chest. And that won't be too far away. So I've had to order some uh, inch and a quarter uh, black uh, tubing because we need an air supply to the chest. So let's put, just move that vice out of the way. So this is our front. This is our bottom piece. That is our back. And there we've got a top. The next thing I've got to do is transfer the markings from there to here and then put 10 millimeter holes in the back so the tubing goes in. Here we are. So that's how we are so far. Show you this. Um, was it the back? Yes, it was the back. I have marked them. So what we've done is it's all been marked out. So I've got A to A and B to B. It's marked out, so these all correspond. With it being handmade, it's not going to be equals perfectly equal spacing. So using this, uh, this is an automatic center pop where the, the halfway between the width and the marking outline corresponds, we've been able to use an automatic center pop. That gives us, it, so it's, not, it's gonna go cleanly in, it's not gonna wiggle around all over the place. So I've set this up so we've got the right depth. We're going through with a pilot drill, which is what, about six millimeter, something like that. And then we'll go through with a 10 millimeter mil, uh, drill because this is, from the inside and of course we want to be drilling from the face side not drilling from the inside so we need a pilot hole so we can find it on the other side so we'll just switch this on in fact it would be easier it would be easier to line it up first and then switch on slowly, not wanting it to break out. I'll probably have to do that can do I can only do two without moving the timber along in the clamp. You've just got to have the time to do it. When I've dealt with churches who want deadlines, right, we want the organ playing for Christmas, well, they can have another organ builder. Look what happened here. With no intention of putting this pedal action on pneumatic, off pneumatic onto electric primary. But this is going to add pop three weeks onto the job. It's also going to add on at least uh, 750 pounds in parts. say, well, I think it likely that your organ will be, you know, seven weeks being, having a clean and overhaul. But it might be, might be six months. Things can happen. 
may not cost the customer more, it may just cost me more. Those holes, I've now changed the drill bit for the 10 millimeter one and I've adjusted the table height and we've adjusted the depth gauge on the drill because I don't want these to drill all the way through because we could end up marring the finish on the other side. So, I think we'll line this up again. This is an ordinary drill, general purpose drill. turn it over and we can do it from the other side for hopefully quite a reasonably neat finish. over that with the sand plate paper and block so now we've got a neat finish both sides so that's it and hopefully our tubing will go through so it's going in from this side it's nice fit into there and we took the precaution of counter boring because the tubing may well end up going into that piece as well. There we go. So it's now time to make some cheeks. Um, not going to finish the cheeks until we've got the tubing arrived. It's got to have its air supply. So I think I'll switch the glue pot on come back in now later when that's warmed up. You'll see that I've plugged the holes there in the side with doweling suitably cut. That's glued in. That'll get just sanded over and we're ready to mount the magnets on that. So now we've got the holes through from the gasketed side through to there. I will suck them out with a vacuum cleaner. Just leave it in there for the glue to dry. Two things. We've got the finished main chest here. So the gasket side of the uh, face board, which will have the magnets on, which I've just shown you, will be matching up to this. There's an inch and a half, inch and a quarter uh, air supply going in there. So those two get screwed together. And then I've been preparing this, which goes to the actual chest, the pedal chest itself, the 1920 bit and this is where the uh, lead tubing went in um, I've just made sure that's drilled for 10 millimeter because it was uh, imperial of course and our tubing's very very mildly probably quarter of a millimeter wider so it is prudent to drill through so what will happen that will get tubed from each of those holes to those 10 millimeter holes which are counterboard on the back because they're smaller on the inside than they are there on the outside. So those two will marry up with the tubing and it should all work.
you can see we've now got all the magnets screwed down three quarter inch number four screws all slotted as it needs to be an organ building and i just need to do some wiring so we're gonna uh, we'll put a negative bus bar we'll make this so that it's uh, switch switches positive if it was using solid state action we'd have a negative return it no i'll start that again we're gonna have a negative return on this if it was solid state action then we would have a positive return wouldn't we because you transistors need to be switching negative but uh, it's so straightforward um, with only the one stop that we don't need to do any switching. Right, so that's the um, air uh, intake hose. It's uh, in inch and a quarter flexible tubing, uh, two blocks that I've made, and that's glued in. That's been glued overnight. And then this morning, I got up at a quarter to six, put the glue heater on, and then three quarters of an hour later, I've put the leather on there to do the gasket so we'll come to that probably about one o'clock this afternoon and cut round it and, and burn through the holes for the screws and then we can fit it and you can see where it's going so not the way I would have liked to have seen this they have this hole to provide the wind supply for the pedal touch box. I would have put the hole in the trunk, but rather than plate that off, we'll keep that bit of history and our hose will go from there to the inlet there. So you see I fitted this um, is it three by two or four by two? It's quite, uh, it's quite substantial. That's in centimeters. Don't know what they are. Um, it is four by two. So that's all ready to go. That will be screwed to there. That's the position I want it in. It makes the magnet caps easily adjustable by just taking this panel off, which is one of the adjustments which you may have to do. Or if you get sawdust coming out of it initially, but we've really, really have vacuumed all the windways out of that. Um, the screws are not equal for deliberate reasons because of the holes drilled through um, for those windways. So what we're now going to do is we're going to tube up from the back of here to the chest and then we're going to electrically test it simply by applying a 12 volt power supply the magnets are uh, 12 to 18 volts nominally organs are 15 um, we'll be using we've got a power supply in stock and if you watch my uh, two-way radio stuff um, there was a particular power supply sold by Tandys which was unregulated and uh, I'm going to use one of those because it's actually ideal it's a two amp supply and we're never going to draw more than like one amp. The number of, we can't hold that many pedals, can you? So our negative return is there, it's positive to make. The pins are just there. The cable form will come up there and go neatly across there and be soldered on. But we're going to test it initially without it being connected to the pedals. We've only got one pipe in on the pedals, which is the biggest one. And we're just going to have to um, watch the valves open and the air come out through the holes. I have got one more pipe prepared. I've got the, we've got bottom C in, we've got bottom D prepared, the rest are still in storage. So I'll get some of those out. And the, and the upper notes I can do quite quickly. So, um, that's where we are, we're going to tube it up. There we have the 1920 original tubing, um, what would you call that? Interface, manifold, whatever, into our new piece, which means of course that the unit can be unscrewed easily, rather than just tubing it and gluing it one to the other. We could have missed that out, but it's, uh, it, I think it's a sensible thing to have. 
So shall I put it in now and bend the tubes accordingly? Let's see. It's in position. Now it's gonna get pushed back a little bit, but because I've only just glued these tubes, I don't want to push it those couple of inches back. It's obviously going to put pressure on those uh, glued joints. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to put the wind on and hope there's no wind leaks. And for the first time, we'll actually put some power onto this and see whether my totally out of my head idea works. Well, it better do. I've just spent 500 quid in three days on it. Temporary lash up of Mr. Chippy's crocodile clips to a handy power supply. Put our negative return on. The only pipe that's in is bottom C, which I think is either the third or the fourth one. It's a very low note. It's the lowest note on the organ for those of you who can hear that. And the rest are just going to make air noises. We've got one on all the time, so what we call a cipher. It may be the magnet needs adjusting, but because they're not chromatic in the way the um, action is, it's difficult to know which one is which at this stage, because I don't know what the pipes are. So I'll just tell you what I think it is. I think it's middle D of the pedals, middle D. So have we got any inkling as to what middle D is? That's making it. That's making it worse. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we we'll take the magnet cap off. Now, some organs, the armatures are not captive like this. Make sure no other ones play. like the right one because you can get a fraction of dirt under the armature especially when you've got new sawdust in here see whether that's clear and the answer is no so we'll get the pipes in and then we'll start worrying about uh, fault finding the one note out of 13 could do better. So as you know, there are 13 pipes on this side, which is the left hand side, which is the C side, as opposed to the C sharp side. So the biggest pipe is already prepared and in. So the second biggest pipe is already prepared and not in. And that's stood up there. So that leaves 11 pipes still in storage. So I fetch four of them out, the four is, the four is, the four smallest. Because these have to hook on to the back of the biggest. They've got hooks which go on to stays which are, are kind of built into the bigger pipes. So I need to get these top ones in first. Now the duff note, the one which I need to sort out is 
four, five, six, seven by the looks of things. So these are wooden pipes which are in a natural colour um, at the, uh, these top four. And then they go on to painted pipes painted in black. So uh, to, to do the fault finding, which is probably just a magnet adjustment, I really do need to get the pipes in or it's going to be right faff. So as we've done before, we need to dismantle the pipes. So I've done three of them. And just in case you missed the part where we were cleaning pipes, you may think this is unnecessary, but it isn't. You can't just take an organ apart, dust off the pipes and shove them in. So we need to take the cap off. I use this electric screwdriver, which the battery's just gone flat on. So we'll use it like that. In fact, all the pipes on the other side, I had a lot of difficulty getting the caps off, drilling screws out and the lights because that was against the very damp wall. So none of the screws so far have broken on this left hand side which was in the church which was not the damp side. So we're going to, as I've shown you before, we're going to run the hacksaw through the slot and we're going to lightly file them so we're refurbishing the slot. So I'm going to clean the inside. We're going to just brush around there, brush around the mouth. This is the initial thing. Get the vacuum cleaner. Then we'll start up start by cleaning the foot. And if you don't take the cap off, that'll be the pipe that you discover later has a dead mouse or a dead bat in it. And that's why it won't speak. It'll be a skeleton. Check these are the same length. So you may pass the one I've already done. What am I doing? Check these are the same length. They are. Let's clean that on the inside. There's mild detergent in this water. I'll just do the face. get the stopper out. I'm just going to just clean the top of it. I've already vacuumed the top of this. So as I've said before we need to break the seal because what I don't want to do is to break the leather. If we have to replace the leather, well, we have to replace the leather. Look at the little hammer. So these are supposed to be greased. 
I'm just going to bash it down and then we should be able to pull it up. Now this one's had mice inside the pipe and have eaten away the inside of the leather so we'll have to replace that. I've shown you replacing leather before. Carry on cleaning this. Right, so we'll get those put together and we'll next show you them in and we'll play those four notes. Here we are upstairs in the organ, handheld, and you may just be able to see, if I put this at arm's length, the tops of those pipes I've just put in. So, I've got this one can't go in its stay because the bigger pipe has its hook on it. So I'll just put it there, it won't play properly. Still got the third one leaking, don't know why, and we'll investigate that on the next video. So I need to have all the pipes in to do it efficiently. So six out of 13 should now play. So switch the power supply on and we'll find out, we'll switch the power supply on when we plug it into the wall. Right, so that must be D that I've just put in. That's a note which isn't there. That's a note that is there. Can we play a tune on that? But oh, there we are. So tell you what we can just do as a final final just to prove the concept um, I will just put a, a positive wire down to the pedal board bus bar and then we'll play those off the pedal board well with my hand anyway I'm a daft hateth how can I do that when it's not been soldered onto the pins yet so there's the cable form ready to go there that'll be the next task <laughs> We're really getting there. That, putting that on is only 20 minutes of work and I need to get on and clean some more pipes. So this is the end of uh, whatever part we're on. We've come on a long way. It's June the, what, 19th, is that, June the 20th as I finish this part off. This organ's been playable since Christmas. Of course, if this was a customer job, we'd be putting more than four hours a day into it. So there you go, that's the electrified the primary on the left hand chest. Obviously I've got the same to do on the right. Won't be in as much detail because you've already seen me make one of those from scratch. And uh, you'll see that the concept out of my little head works. So as far as the pedals go, we also have the pedal coupler, the great to pedal coupler. This organ doesn't have a swell to pedal coupler, unfortunately, which is actually more use but it doesn't, and the first two pedal stickers, as they're called, are in, so those would couple. I decided not to go any further in there in case any of those magnets need altering. That's the uh, permanent magnets that operate the reed switches, just in case. I thought, if I do that, I won't be able to adjust them, so I, I started doing the action on the board on itself, as you've seen. So, I don't like that uh, coming out of the face board of the 
left hand pneumatic chest but that's how they've done it I could have blocked it off no I, I thought we'll use that hole that's what they did in 1920 the right hand chest will be winded from the pedal trunk there are some wind leaks on the pedal system we'll be going around that with leather uh, because I can assure you there's hardly any wind left to play anything else with this activated so there you go thanks for watching catch you on the next part